That last moment hit me like a goddamn freight train. Greetings once again, heroes and villains out there. Dudes Diz Den back again with more of my Hero Academia, where previously the first year students were in a mad dash in order to see the heroes who helped save all of Japan, specifically Bakugo and Todoroki. Although they get reprimanded since a lot of our heroes are still healing after everything that's gone down. One student even tells Izuku how much of an inspiration he was, and yet all Izuku can think of is Spinner and his words previously. We later see Class A helping with the reconstruction efforts with a lot of the pro hero, and even Edshot, despite everything that's happened to him, is slowly starting to return to normal? Maybe? It's hard to say if he'll ever fully be normal. For the first year students, <laughs> dragging Cementos along, their teacher, in a show of apology, wish to help with the reconstruction effort. They also find out later that during Ochako's battle with Himiko Toga, the camera that was recording the events ended up dying right before the conclusion, meaning that nobody got to see Toga's sacrifice for Uraka. And later that night, Froppy gets a little worried because Uraka hasn't really been responding to any of her tech, and Uraka, out by the mountainside, is overwhelmed by the thoughts of what has happened to Toga. The we still aren't very clear on what it was that happened to her. Uraka starts to break down into tears, only for Ur Izuku to arrive on the scene, having known that something was up with his friend. What happens next? Join me as I find out, won't you? Alright, My Hero Academia number 429. I am here. And I think we're getting that figure we saw walking through the destruction a few chapters before. We have narration saying, All I hear about my quirk was that it was a freak variant, unrelated to any others in my family's history. Oh, oh, is it like the next Tomura? Out of nowhere, my mom, dad, sister, uncle, aunt, grandma, grandpa, and great-grandpa stopped being nice to me. They tied me up and locked me in the basement. I was scared. I was so scared and sad. I started crying and screaming. So they sewed my mouth shut to keep it from opening wide. Jesus. I don't know how many years went by, but one day, they told me the country's doomed and tossed a bunch of water and baked goods at me. After that, I never saw them ever again. Some more time passed. With a big crash, something cut an opening down into my basement. Oh, was it the fight with Gigantomachia? Because I think that's the scene where that one Uraka saw that one hero just kind of giving up. Just like that, I was free to go outside. Hey, the sunlight was painful and scary because I wasn't used to it. What had I done wrong? Why did I have to feel so sad? All this time, I've been so scared and sad. And then he sees people helping out with the relief effort, with the rebuilding, kids handing out water, or well, green tea, it says on the boxes. And as the young man sees this, he glares and thinks, so why are all these people smiling so much? We then cut to Uraka, breaking down, thinking, I've always loved seeing people smile. That's why I set out to be a hero. He remembers Toga's words. Ochako, you could have just done the right thing like a plain old hero yet. Yet you went above and beyond and spared a thought for me. And as she thinks more of Toga, he cries and thinks, I got to live on at the cost of... Mika Toga's life. Oh, jeez. So Toga did die. It's my fault she's... Uh, that is rough. Knowing that someone died for you. Even if it was a bad person, Toga died so that Uraka could live. Even though it was Toga's fault. Oh, that... Oh, that would create complicated feelings. I mean... <sighs> It would be so, ah, that's that concept alone. No wonder she's going through it. Araka thinks, it's my fault she's, but then Deku just races in on the scene, calling out to Araka. Araka tries to hide her face with her arms, shocked at Deku's arrival. She questions, what, why are you here? How do you, Deku says, I just knew somehow. So I looked over with one for all. Because this is the spot where we had our heart to heart. Yeah. He remembers th when they talked before the final battle. Uraka quickly 
wipes her eyes, saying, That's not what I meant. I said I was headed home for now, Deku says, which would have been fine. But I had a feeling you'd be here. Raka, still shielding her eyes, peeks over, saying, Why come, though, when I don't feel like being seen? Deku says, Sorry, but I want to show you to show me what you're going through. Because, Raka, you've always been this way. Yeah. He thinks back to all the times that she just kind of masked her pain with a smile or a bit of silliness. He says, even back during the entrance exam, he remembers her words. Man, you can really see the change in art style through this flashbacks too. Maraka saying, it's my quirk, sorry for stopping you, but, oh, it's a bad omen to trip and fall. Deku says, and with the points we needed to pass, he remembers when Uraka told them, Do you give him some of the points I earned? Deku tells her all along, without fail. Uraka says, when they had got into UA, but Deku, well, it just screams, do your best. I kind of like it. Deku tells her, you prioritize others over yourself. During the sports festival too, every time. Since way back, Araka starts to tear up, and then Deku thinks back to when everyone came and got him, saying, Deku, you gotta, oh, when his power was going out of control, when Doc Whip came out, Araka telling her, telling him, Deku, you gotta calm down, or when they were trying to get him back into UA, Araka saying, this place is his hero academia, let him stay here, Deku tells her, you've been saving me every step of the way, you're my hero, which is why I can't Keep taking that strength of yours for granted. He walks over and takes her hand, saying holding a hand can be enough to soothe the pain. And Haraka breaks down in tears as she struggles to talk through the tears and the pain. He says, Himiko, he, it's my fault she's dead. As she cries, she says, if only I didn't get stabbed. If only in my head wasn't full of pointless thoughts. Because her quirk let her share blood with others. But it didn't have to end like that. I bet I could have found another way. If only I'd have been, I'd figured her out sooner. Maybe it would have gone differently if we'd met as little kids. And she's getting wrapped up in the what if. And the words that have been racing through Uraka's words for some time. When heroes need protecting, who will be there to protect them? Deku, tears in his eyes as well, says, I get it. The same thing's been weighing on me about Tenko, about Tomura Shigaraki, I mean. I was told that I couldn't tackle that battle the same way as all the others. All for one himself said the path I chose was a thorny one. Even so, I know if we keep going above and beyond to reach out, even when nobody's asking, it'll make a difference. Aw, <laughs> I'm actually kind of mad that everybody's kind of showing up. Oh, and I love the fact that... <laughs> Deku's starting to float because of Uraka's ability, but suddenly you see dark shadow over the rise and say, ah, she really is here. And Class A comes racing over, the student saying, Uraka, we're here for you too. Proppy says, Ochako, you silly head. She grabs Uraka in a hug and says, I was waiting for you to open up to me. You know you can say whatever's on your mind. Deku looks at his hand, scarred as it is, but he still feels that ember of all for one. I mean, one for all. <laughs> and Bakugo turns to him saying, that was a big burst you used to get here. How's the ember doing? Neku says, it's fine. But Mineta says, questions this. And Tokiyami says, the ember? Wait, you mean? And the others say, no, hold on. Why didn't you say anything? Now everyone goes racing over to Deku, reprimanding him. And as Aizawa watches his students, he just smiles. It's a good moment. Although I... <laughs> I think it'll be better portrayed in the anime. Because I feel like that moment with Deku and Uraraka should have had, I don't know, just a little bit more time. I feel like we should have lingered on that moment between the two of them for a little longer. And they have Deku's narration. I completed one for all. That amalgamation of power wove together by courage and heroism. We then see class to be now celebrating as it seems that monoma got like a bust is it because of his participation in the battle and <laughs> he is just eating it up oh, he did really help he helped in a big way so he deserves that and we have some kind of celebration <laughs> where jiro's on guitar and eerie seems like she she has a microphone and she keeps peeking over at jiro and then you have monoma is it a birthday because no Aoyama's there. And he has some kind of birthday hat on? Oh, farewell Aoyama. Okay. 
And then he, he just jumps up and starts singing, Aw, oh, come on, you cannot die me. Deny me. A moment of eerie singing. I mean, yeah, eerie. Eerie. And Deku's narration says, going forward, as long as everyone contributes to the weaving. We then have, I guess, Hawks and All Might having a meal together. Although... All Might, the darkness on his eyes is like clearing up or something. I wonder what that means. And I think All Might questions, broadening the scope of the billboard chart, you say. Hawk says, that's one part of the plan, yeah. But only once the country's on his feet again, of course. It's clear that plenty of folks besides us pro heroes played a huge role in the war. Which is why we should also be giving props to heroes in the original sense of the word. Not just current and currently employed professional capital H hero. Ah, to the service workers and stuff like that. All Might says, I thought you might want to lean away from the whole popularity contest altogether. As he eats, Hawks tells him, that makes sense if you're only seeing the cons of the system and none of the pros. But I'm talking about an update that doesn't toss the baby out with the bathwater. And Hawks thinks of how he treasured his endeavor doll Alex tells him because even the greatest of all time can only handle so much and if we're hoping to save more folks their saviors got to include more than just us pros oh i get what he's saying all might says i see in hopes of cultivating any number of great heroes Alex points at him saying mm -hmm. we then see the ragged young man from before Stumble out into the street while everyone else is going about their lives. As the boy thinks, as a man thinks, it's hard to tell, honestly. Why just me? Why did I suffer? Darkness starts to ooze from his hand. But before it can go too far, an older woman... Ah, I get it. An older woman takes his hand, saying, You there, boy. And though she's a bit shaky, especially looking into the boy's eyes, he remembers long ago and she looked into the... Frightful eyes of a young Tomura Shigaraki was too frightened to do anything. The older woman thinks, I, won't, I still wonder whether or not a hero helped that little boy after I walked away. Now and then, it keeps me up at night. Oh, okay. I had to realize for a second, this is Hawks talking. As he says, that day, Izuku Midori demonstrated to society the need to support each other. He taught us that sitting back and doing nothing isn't an option. I know that what he did hit home with society, and I bet the someday soon, heroes will have time to kill. And as the older woman thinks back to all the destruction she saw, she grasps the young man's hands firmly, saying, You'll be just fine, because Granny is here to help, and this one act of kindness is able to take away that darkness in the boy's eyes. And he begins to well up with tears, and as Deku and Araka are walking in that same direction, Ida calls out to them, Hey! Is all well, you two? And Deku and Uraraka just look at each other and smile. Ugh, I had to take a moment because that, that last moment hit me like a goddamn freight train. Just, ugh. And just finding out that Toga died. Dang. Uh, first, I want to talk about this color spread, which I overlooked because I was so ready to jump into the chapter, which celebrates 10 years of My Hero Academia time of recording, and is also for the upcoming movie that's coming out. I of Higakure just it's like now that she can be seen she is overjoyed <laughs> and you gotta love how the person with the invisibility power has the most vibrant hair possible and man these fits are gorgeous Mina rocking the suit Mineta just chilling there on the ground and even a good big smile from Azawa like Dang, I thought Froppy was wearing a dress too, but now she's wearing a, ni a very nice top and pants. Like, seriously, dang. Love Kaminari just starting to fall over. And I'm glad that even Shinsa managed to get in. And Aoyama, because <laughs> everybody's falling because of little Miss Not-So-Invisible Girl up there. <laughs> and Shinsa's dragging Aoyama down by accident. Love Tokoyami trying to be all dark and brooding. It's good stuff. Stuff. Can't wait for the movie though. I'm interested to see 
because all the other movies managed to actually play a role but it's a little too late for the this last movie to actually have any plot relevance so and apparently it takes place right before the final battle like literally right right before in that little space of time right after Ayama was revealed to be the traitor but I gotta say man I wish we hadn't really beat around the bush with what happened to Toga and I do find myself wondering if her parents would even mourn her with everything that happened I'm glad we got to see someone mourn her cuz despite everything she was a teenage girl everybody else they were adults to at least a certain degree but Togo was still very young yeah I just re-looked at a few everybody else was in their 20s and up old enough that yeah but Toga with everything that she had done she'd be tried as an adult ah <sighs> man I feel like that moment between Deku and Uraka needed a little bit more time though cause I don't know I needed just a little bit more from that not saying it wasn't good but just a little bit more before the rest of the class showed up. Because I really like Deku and Uraka having that moment. Him really getting to thank her for everything she's done. Because he has been constantly in his corner since he started UA. And I'm glad we acknowledged that. Like seriously. Actually getting it was actually really good. Hawks' decision to have still keep the billboard chart and acknowledge others beyond pro. Mm, I'm a little shaky on that. I understand his reasoning because ultimately he wants a way of at least giving props to those who helped out in everything that went down. He wants to make sure everyone is acknowledged, but I don't know. I'm curious about what other reforms he'd want to do to the nature of hero-based society, especially in Japan. Although it might be easier said than done. Positions that like that usually have some form of committee and it has to be overseen and dictated what can and can't happen and yada 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 it's a bureaucracy you know but who knows one step at a time as hawks gains a little bit more power hopefully he'll be able to reshape things in a bit of a better direction will that stick uh, well only time will tell and who knows it all might only be for as long as hawks is in power but he's young, so a good 30, 40, 50 years maybe. Trying to remain optimistic when it comes to a lot of this. Because even Vigilante showed that the quirk-based society, especially in Japan, has a lot of weird stipulation. But time will tell. And man, finding out about that person from chapters back. And understanding what he went through. It, it's not quite like Tomura because he didn't end up killing his old family. But eh, it's more of a middle ground between Tomura and Toga. Because who knows? If Tomura's quirk was one that was a little bit more manageable. Would he have been locked away by his father? And it's obvious because of what had happened. His mother wasn't, and the rest of the family wasn't putting up with the father's bull anymore, but they didn't really get the chance to really reach out to him like they wanted to because he was having this big old panic attack and everything went down. And unfortunately, because Tomra, once he was at a point where he could have maybe gotten the help he needed and maybe not dissolved the granny should she have reached out her hand and she didn't even need to necessarily take the boy's hand but at least have actually made sure that he got the help that he needed and that full circle moment with her deciding to reach her hand out regardless of how she might feel initially knowing that just sometimes a hero doesn't come along and you need to be that hero it's a kind of if you see something say something kind of mentality that it's kind of needed i like that because i was really starting to feel like did society learn nothing i get it you don't want to get people sympathetic to tomura but you need to understand where this problem started from and knowing that there are those who 
could actually learn from what had happened, I think is a very good direction to go. Because who knows? Maybe he would have just started leashing his quirk and he would have started attacking and that's when Deku and Uraka come in and have to subdue him or something like that. And he just gets more and more hate-filled and it keeps escalating or something like that. Maybe they would have got there in time in order to help him. You never know. But that one second of difference made the difference. And I think that's a very good message to show. I've always had that mindset, especially when it comes to young kids. What well, could be a moment, an insignificant moment to you, could be a world of difference for a child or even a teen or something like that. I always look back on a moment where I gave one teenage kid advice considering where my life had gone and he made a lot of changes to his life and it went in a much better direction because of that. You know, he felt a certain way about his weight. He was trying to get with this girl and he did all of that. He man dude dude got the good route <laughs> went into the military it, i mean i doubt he doesn't have his own share of struggles nowadays but a lot of the pictures i see of him more recently have been very good and that was true that was years ago and i can only toot my horn about that because he came up to me one day in a restaurant and he thanked me for a lot of what I said and actually kind of you know being there for him and I feel absolutely great about that I will never regret that moment so if anything is to be taken away from this even with Uraka because she helped Deku because she always extended that hand the takeaway is extend a hand even if you feel you can't make the difference even if it may be a little intimidating try you never know how it might turn out and what massive changes you can make to someone's life but let me know your thoughts in the comment section below on this chapter like comment subscribe if you enjoyed the ride thank you so much for watching and until next time i've been dudes this then and hope to see you later till then take care Bye bye